Thank you for joining Jennifer Schatz and Associates in our 2019 webinar Wednesday series. We are coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday, and you can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website and on our YouTube channel, along with over 160 other recordings on federal contracting topics. All are complimentary. If you have questions for our speaker today, you can email her directly with the contact information you'll see on the last slide. Which is a little bit about us. We are a Washington, D.C.-based firm and provide services for federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to report the writing and also post-award compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. These are a few upcoming events that you can find more information here or also on our website. And we now offer advertising, so you can send me an email if you would like more information. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Marsha Lindquist is our speaker today, and she's gonna be covering Beyond Basics Advanced Pricing Strategies. I'm gonna go ahead and hand over to you, Marsha. Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you, everybody, for, for joining us today. Uh, we're going to talk about some advanced pricing strategies that are a little bit more, shall I say, I don't mean that it's out there, but people don't tend to consider some of these. So in the next slide, uh, let's begin to talk about some of the things that um, you can do. Um, most importantly, uh, and I put this one first because I, I really think it's an extremely important. Um, a lot of your bids that people are going after are not about low price. We're seeing less of that low price, technically acceptable kind of bids. We're seeing a lot more best value and we're seeing where the customer um, does want to see what your solution is or wants to see what your ideas are. So it's important um, to get to know what value you add beyond what other uh, co uh, competitors are, are offering. And to do that, let me play into this one just a little bit. You have to have uh, established what the customer is looking for. In other words, you would have had to have gathered customer intelligence in order to know what value you can add. If you are just guessing at what the customer is looking for, then you shouldn't be bidding that bid. Uh, and I'm really, really strong about this because I see companies going after bids that they have no business going after. But if you know where the customer's hot buttons are and you can add value, and let me stay on those two words, your your value adds have to be something that the customer cares about okay, that your competitors cannot or do not offer and only you can offer it. And you have to portray that value in your um, pricing or in your pricing volume or your business volume. You can't just say it's in there and let them find it. You've got to highlight it for them. And this is, um, this is a very, very strong point that I want to talk about because so many companies put their extra dollars in there, but they don't highlight what it is. The best thing that you can do is to actually respond to the requirement. And if you've got something where you can add value that's over and above what the customer is looking for, you have a new and innovative system schedule way of saving the customer money, uh, making them look better or making them uh, their job easier, then you want to portray that value and sometimes not put it into your pricing or tell them what the value of that would be to them. In other words, if we employed these three things, we could save you, I don't know, $20 million. Um, you don't want to put that in your pricing, but you want to highlight it in your particular um, business volume. The second one is uh, about escalation. Escalation is one of those things that you can't, I mean, so many companies take a number, let's call it two and a half, three percent or whatever it happens to be, and they apply it across the board like peanut butter. Um, I, I want to say that you need to be judicious about the use of escalation because very honestly, there are some of, of what you're bidding that shouldn't get escalated at all. 
uh, or perhaps would decrease over time. Hang on one second while I sneeze. I hope it's one sneeze. Anyway, um, the escalation is one of those things that should not just be rote that you put into your pricing and move forward. It should be something that you think about, something that you consider for each and every year, each and every, if you're bidding labor categories, labor categories. Um, do you uh, Should you apply escalation to travel and materials or should you not do that? You need to make some judicious, conscious thoughts about that. Uh, the third one that we um, sometimes see is the use of what I call uncompensated overtime factors. Um, you're required by the DCA um, to record all time, and you can use that history that you've got in order to be able to calculate what um, what uncompensated overtime factor you might want to use. Now, some bids will tell you that they forbid the use of uncompensated overtime, but some of them will ask you about it. And if they ask you about it, and most importantly, the and part of this is important, and you have a track record on it, in other words, if you can say that um, you know your employees tend to work, let's call it 42 hours a week instead of 40 hours a week, and you can demonstrate that in your data, then you could bid it. Where does this come into play? The most important place it comes into play is when you're bidding cost plus work. Um, it doesn't do you a lot of good to, to use it on uh, firm fixed price contracts because if you're employing the same people and you're using the, uh, them full time, it's not going to matter. Their salary is their salary is their salary. So let's talk about, on the next slide, let's talk about some important factors here uh, that I want to delve into. All right, so in the value adds, and I want to take a little deeper dive here. Um, in the value adds and portraying value, you're going to show your customer the, the enhancements that you're thinking about. You respond to the requirements that are in the RFP, but if you've got enhancements that they are not necessarily stating in the RFP, but you know from your customer intelligence gathering that they particularly are interested in, you could address that not only in your technical volume, but also in your cost volume as well. So show them the, um, the dollar value of that and what they're getting for it. In other words, what are the features of your value adds and what are the benefits of those? A table on that is a great way to do that. I like to show the dollar value of that enhancement as well. The other part is that you must demonstrate it visually. You've got to give them a picture. I call it avoiding the gray wall. The gray wall is the big wall of words that describe what you're talking about instead of a picture that will portray to the customer what they're saving. If it's a time savings, a schedule savings, then show it to them in a clock format or um, you know, a schedule format that shows that you know, here we had 20 months to do this and now we're going to do it in 15, something like that, a visual that will get, give them the idea of what you're talking about. Also do a price volume executive summary. Um, and in that, what I'm saying is um, find out what, they, what their hot buttons are, find out in your uh, intelligence gathering what the customer cares about. Don't guess at it. If you're guessing at it and wondering what they might want, then you have no business bidding it. In this executive summary, um, you should be highlighting the things that you found out when you asked the customer what else is of concern to them. If you can't do that, then I'm just telling you that you are going to fall behind your competition because they will be doing that. All right, let's go into the next slide, and we're going to talk about um, point number two that I wanted to uh, address today in the next slide. So in the next slide, we're going to talk about escalation a little bit deeper. If you've got a lengthy contract, you may actually realize de-escalation if you're using greening. So if you do that, you can actually show over time 
that you may be decreasing the cost of some of, of what you are offering, if it's labor related, or if you've got um, competition and you've got your 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 sh- you're sharing it, and that's what greening really is is co- new competition coming in. So if you do that, then you can actually talk about and be very specific about specific about where you're greening, so that you are not necessarily escalating. Uh, the lower salaries uh, will obviously pop up as you green the staff. Um, maybe you start out the project with. Uh, senior staff, and you integrate um, junior people as you move out. It shows a progression. It shows promotion. It's a great, great, great way of reducing cost and showing that you are improving your staff uh, development and ability to promote. Um, Most importantly about your escalation is really what's your story here. Uh, If you... If you say, well, we're just going to apply X percent to it, there's really no story behind it. Um, If you are using escalation, the best way to do that would be to base it on your own history. If you've got enough of a a history that you can demonstrate that, that's a great way to do that. Um, If you're selective about it and you've got a database of of what you've used before for these several uh, categories, then that's your backstory. That's your backup. Uh, if you're going out to public information to get that information, develop your story about that. Um, don't just say, here's the number and move on. Tell the evaluator um, how you developed uh, those escalation rates and where you applied them and why. All right, in our next slide, let's talk about total time and total un- and uncompensated over time. I'm giving you the, the several citations where the requirements are set out in both FAR and in CAS. And even if you are not, quote, CAS covered, in CAS 401, everybody is subject to CAS 401 um, because you've got to be consistent about the way you apply your timekeeping. In other words, you've got to make sure that if in the past you have used, let's call it 42 hours as my example was at the beginning of this, if that is what you've used as your own history, then you really are almost obliged to use it going forward. Um, But you've also got to make sure that you, and I'm going to get to my third point now, you've got to make sure that you record it and use your history to defend it. Um, You're going to you can't just say, okay, we're going to work everybody 44 hours and that's not what your history has demonstrated. You've actually got to begin to do it in order to be able to justify it adequately. It's very, very, very useful on cost plus work if it's allowed and the requirement would be would set it out and let us know whether it's allowed or not. If it's expressly not stated that way, then you can, and I I would certainly consider it on cost plus work. Okay, next slide. Let's let's talk about what we've taken away from today. So I can't emphasize number one really enough. Your value adds are really really important. It distinguishes you from uh, everybody else in your competition. And I wrote on here, think canine smile. Now, what I, what do I mean by that? I, I'm a dog lover. People know that about me. Um, and I watch dog shows a lot or as much as I can. And I notice that when the judge is judging the dogs, they're judging them against the standard. They want to make sure that the, the, the dog meets the standard and is the best demonstrated answer to that standard. But every once in a while, the dog that wins is the one that turns around to the judge and smiles. So uh, you've got to do something that's different than your competition about your price. And if you can offer up some value adds to your customers, they will find a reason to choose you because that may set you apart just from everybody else. Okay, so I talked about escalation. 
Uh, the documentation is really, really important because it can make your bid more competitive. You can um, incorporate the discussion of staff greening in, in your discussion of escalation. You can talk about where you've been choosy about applying escalation or not. There's a lot of things you can touch on in escalation other than a one sentence um, you know, quote that says, this is the rate we've used and here's how we got there. It's, it make it a little bit more um, you know, inviting for the uh, evaluator to look at it and say they really thought this through. Okay, and in number three, uncompensated overtime. Again, when it's allowed, can lower your cost plus bids. So I think it's really important to consider that. It's an advanced technique, certainly. I don't recommend it all the time. I only recommend it if you're prepared to not only bid it that way, but you've got history that way, you're going to book it that way, and you're going to bill it that way. So, uh, and that's back to my CAS 401 consistency um, uh, address that right there. So I want to thank everybody for, for joining us today for this discussion on advanced um, pricing strategies. And uh, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you so much, Marcia, for your knowledge and insight today. Uh, today's presentation has been recorded and can be found on our website or YouTube channel within about 48 hours. If you have questions about today's topic, please contact Marcia at the phone number or email shown on your screen. Thank you, everybody. This concludes the webinar.